Uh, you know, it's a real honor to be here with you and uh, with the Fellowship of Reconciliation who for so long have held up the whole notion of people can get along. You know, as Susan made out, you know, it's really about community. You know, that we are human beings together. And uh, so I hope that a little bit that I have to say here would reflect some of the great hopes that Susan had already mentioned too. Um, I was, uh, I went, to, it was in December actually, I went to Norway. I had a friend, Joel Powerdudis, who accompanied me. Uh, and um, we were there to, uh, we were sent by the Scandinavian Cultural Center in, uh, in Tacoma, Pierce County. They had awarded us this uh, uh, Peace Laureate uh, Award. And so they, we were enabled to go to the Nobel Peace Ceremony there in uh, Oslo, you know. So, but I, that to me it was a great, uh, it was a great opportunity um, to visit other places in Europe, especially in England and, and Scotland and the United Kingdom uh, to kind of, uh, once again, to renew acquaintances there. And I've been there uh, sometimes before in both England and Scotland and uh, once again, to renew our resistance to nuclear weapons and see what's going on there. Um, what I am going to focus on a little bit is, uh, is the, our struggle against nuclear weapons. When you mention nuclear weapons, especially to younger people, you know, it's, uh, it's an issue that's really not even, it's not on the back burner, it's not even on the stove. You know, people kind of shrug, you get kind of used to nuclear weapons. And, uh, and of course, there are other things that are very, uh, very burning, you know, like the drone warfare, what we're doing in Pakistan, what's happening in Afghanistan, in the Sudan, what's happening with health care, what's happening with education. There are so many other things that are real deep issues, you know, that, uh, um, but to kind of come back, and it's not to deny that, that they are big issues. Um, and so, and to come to, you know, to come to nuclear weapons, it's always sort of like the, um, you know, it's like the elephant in the uh, parlor. You know, the uh, it, uh, it's not mentioned too much, you know. But because of our nuclear weapon superiority, we are the United States. You know that we do push around other nations. We do set our own control systems up. You know and. Uh, and so we do use that. We do threaten other people in so many different ways. And, uh, and so much so that, you know, like the nuclear weapon, uh, you know, at least the, uh, the fable about it, you know, it's a deterrent. Well, it doesn't deter anything. There are more nuclear weapon people, states now, that are armed against one another. And so, you know, it puts our global community into a sense of fear of one another with you have a, if you have a gun pointed at your head, you don't feel too comfortable. And we do that to each other as nations, you know, just uh, with, the, uh, with the possession of nuclear weapons and, and the more and more that they are produced, more and more people are thinking that's the only way that we're gonna get any status or that's the only way that we're gonna continue to exist as a nation, you know, we have to, and this is third world nations as well. The know-how, how to put together nuclear weapons is old stuff. They, they learned it in MIT at, in freshman classes, how, how to make an atom bomb, you know, and uh, not that they're intended to be used or anything else, but the, the technology and everything, that's well known, it's well understood, uh, and that's pretty, through, pretty, um, you know, pretty thorough throughout our whole global system. And so anyway, they're there, and so, um, the focus here is a bit on, on nuclear weapons, not to try to cast out the other issues that are burning issues as well, but some way just to kind of refocus a little bit on it, you know, and, uh, you know, and especially in, in the age that we live in, you know, there's so much violence that we're all, and especially, uh, you know, we're so aware of that in the United States, especially what just happened in Boston with the, uh, the bombings there, what happened in, in Connecticut with the, uh, with the young first graders and the six adults who were wiped out, you know, by automatic rifle, automatic weapons. And uh, so, and we're very, so, so tremendously aware of the violence that is in our country, 
you know, it's pretty endemic. It's, uh, you know, and uh, so it's not a good time for people to be having guns or saying, I, I have to stick by my Second Amendment right, you know. Uh, you know, for example, you know, there's almost as many people with handguns and so forth per ration, or pardon me, proportionately in, in Canada as there are in the United States. They, Canada, this is two years ago, I think they had 57 assaults or deaths through handguns. The United States had 12,000 people that were murdered, thought, you know, through that, you know. And it, uh, so there's something going on. It's a, it's, a, it's a sense of violence that pretty well permeates our place, no matter how deep down we can see just what happened on the last vote here in the Senate when the just minimal things were rejected in the Senate as far as uh, protection, as far as gun protection and so forth, you know. So, um, so what I say is what, um, you, know, uh, you know, I almost think it, it would be easier to rid ourselves of nuclear weapons than it would of the handguns or the right to carry a handgun. I said, they, I think that's so deeply embedded. Um, but I think what, I, what I'd like to just touch on more than anything else is um, uh, we are not alone in wanting to overturn nuclear weapons and want to abolish nuclear weapons. It's a real global issue. It's a global issue. And so there is that spirit, there is that kind of sense of uh, let's not be killing one another. There's another way to do it. We can work things out at the table rather than with guns or so forth, you know. And, uh, and I think, you know, just the possession of nuclear weapons, as especially in the United States, as we have them. Um, Richard McSorley, he was a Jesuit priest teaching in Georgetown. He said the taproot of violence in our, uh, in our nation is our ascent to nuclear weapons, you know, from this, all other violence seems to flow out. And it's something silent, it's something we don't talk about too much. And, uh, and, um, and we kind of, you know, because there are so many other issues, you know, and I'm not saying that this necessarily crowds out other issues or should, but just being aware, uh, you know, because I think that um, the power that we have as a people together you know, the strength that's in nonviolence, the strength of who we are and what we want, the strength of our being oriented towards the fact of our humanity is common throughout this world, I think that is much stronger than any force of a nuclear weapon or any forces other than that. I think that's, that what we have, we have power that we are, uh, you know, not really that conscious of. I think, you know, we all live in, a, in an age of fear and, and at times hopelessness comes in saying, well, what can I do? I can't do anything. But we can do so much about who we are. Uh, and just who we are is so important. Uh, and just our, our coming together, our saying no, you know, the power of nonviolence, the power that we have within ourselves is tremendous. It is tremendous. And uh, we have to consider that, you know, that uh, it's not meant to be a violent world. And most people of the world don't want to kill each other or eliminate each other. And so I think, you know, it's finding our ways of, uh, of being human, not only with one another, but with those who are come from other cultures as well. We're going to just um, show a few slides here. So what we're going to do is maybe just concentrate. Uh, I, what I just would like to bring the fact that it is, it's, it's a global issue. We are connected with other people throughout this world and so forth, you know, and uh, as much as we can foster that and be aware of that, you know, I think that uh, um, the more, I think, encouraged we are that we can do something, we will do something. We're not alone. So I think um, maybe we can start. Oh, okay. Uh, well, we went to, besides going to Norway, we went to Sweden, and this is a man, Per Hernegren, and he was um, uh, 
he had come to the United States in the 80s, and he, he wanted to learn more about the, uh, the nonviolent actions that were taking place, especially on the East Coast with the, uh, through, with the Berrigan brothers and others. So he joined the Jonah House community there, and that was in the, the 80s. Uh, he did a plowshares action uh, where they went down and they hammered on a, one of the um, uh, one of the planes that was uh, being used in Iraq and so forth. Uh, and so anyway, for that action, he was he was given a year and a half. Um, but when he and then he was uh, he was not allowed back in the United States. When he got back to Sweden, he started a, a, a Jonah House like community or a Catholic worker like community called the Vine and Fig Tree, and there he's been, um, he's worked in collaboration with other people from Denmark and other parts of the world, or pardon me, other parts of Europe, to form what they called European plowshares. And they have done a number of actions, overt actions, um, against, uh, against nuclear weapons, especially at the Saab plant there in, uh, in Gothenburg, Sweden, Saab, the automobile outfit, but they, they are very diversified and they are great producers of weapons as well, weapons at a set. So they have done a lot of, uh, lot of work there. Okay. Um, so then after that, we're going to just kind of, we go to London. This is a, an interview with Kieran O'Reilly. He was a man, he's done a number of plowshares actions in Australia and in uh, the United States and Ireland. He's a good friend of Julian Assange. They're both Australians. Um, and so every day, um, every day he stands vigil at the Ecuadorian embassy there in support of Julian Assange. Uh, but anyway, he stands as a, you know, as a, he's a, a sense, a real sense of resistance, uh, not only to nuclear weapons, but to any type of violence. And then this is also Pat Gaffney, she is in London as well, and um, she, um, she's the uh, Secretary General of Pax Christi, and she's done more in England to bring people to the awareness of nuclear weapons, and they also have a Trident submarine in, in England, the United Kingdom. I'll talk a little bit more about that. And uh, it's based in Scotland, off the west coast of Scotland, in Fast Lane. But she... Uh, informs people of all different issues, nuclear weapon issue, the, Scott, the Trident issue, uh, what's going on in the uh, Palestinian-Israeli uh, conflicts. But she has been just tremendously, tremendously aware. She herself has been arrested over eight times in her actions for peace. Uh, but she was a great person to be in touch with in, in London. Um, um, this is also, we stopped in Oxford. This is a friend of mine, Jerry Hughes. We were together in Frankfurt in theology together. Uh, um, and uh, so he has a great voice of peace throughout the whole United Kingdom. His writings, his, uh, his presentations, uh, he does a lot of directed retreats and things like that. But uh, I'm just sorry we don't have that on some of his very eloquent words there about the need to, uh, a need to eliminate and abolish nuclear weapons. All of them, everyone we speak of, are very much in favor of civil resistance, civil disobedience as a way of doing this. And this is a, this is a picture as we're leaving, us, as we're leaving. That's Joe uh, right next to Jerry. That's Joe Power Drudis. Uh, I was able to take Joe along. They, the uh, Scandinavian Cultural Center prayed for our uh, uh, paid for our trip there. Then Helen on the one side of Joe, and this is Flavia. They're doing a documentary on an action that we did up in Bangor some uh, three years ago, actually. And then she wanted to, Helen especially is a documentarian, and she wanted to accompany us to uh, more get a, a global perspective on, on uh, the uh, uh, war against nuclear weapons. This is Angie Zelter. Uh, Angie is from Wales. She's the foremost peace activist in all of the United Kingdom, 
possibly in Europe. She's been arrested so many times that she's a real, she's a real expert on uh, international law and humanitarian law. Um, she, one of her actions, she and a couple other women swam out to the Trident base in Scotland to where one of the Tridents was posted. And right next to that Trident, there was a barge that had a lot of the, uh, a lot of the equipment on it that's necessary for the operation of the Trident. They got aboard this barge and then uh, it was mostly computers and threw all them overboard, you know. She's, uh, she's waging a, a, great, a great campaign in England now. She has a web page, uh, but what she's doing, they're, they're going to vote once again whether to renew their Trident fleet in England, in the United Kingdom, in a couple of years, they're going to vote on it again. So she's, she's gearing up with lots of actions and lots of people consciousness raising about getting rid of the Trident, getting rid of nuclear weapons in England. And uh, so anyway, but she is a, she is a tremendous, tremendous, uh, she's a tremendous ally. She was here when we, uh, I and four others were on trial a couple of years ago for an action. We did up the Bangor submarine base and she was here to testify uh, on our behalf. Okay, this is a, another couple that's Brian Larkin and Jane. They, uh, Brian is actually from America. He's been in, the, in, in Scotland now for uh, about 25 years and that's his wife, Jane, who is Scottish. She, she helped to form the Fast Lane Peace Camp. That's a camp that's right next to where the Fast Lane Trident Submarine Base is. And uh, she and Angie Zelter over the years have worked very closely together. Um, but they were our contact persons all the time in Scotland. Uh, yeah. This uh, they're, they're, then also this is an interview with Ellen Wilkie. He's a man that pushed other countries into bringing, the, bringing the, the whole subject of nuclear weapons to the International Court of Justice. And uh, he was one of the uh, prime reasons for doing that. The International Court of Justice ruled in 1996 that, the, that nuclear weapons, the use certainly of them, but nuclear weapons are uh, against international law, humanitarian law. Uh, and then this is we had an interview with uh, Cardinal O'Brien too, who for 10 years uh, had very strongly opposed nuclear weapons in, in Scotland. Um, if I could just say that, um, you know, that there is a Trident submarine base in Scotland to its, its station at Fast Lane, and there they have four Trident submarines. Their missiles are leased from the United States. They're very tied into the United States. Um, and uh, so, and there's a strong, strong ecumenical spirit in Scotland where over 80% of the people want nuclear weapons and the Trident submarine, they want it gone. You know, and, and I think if there's any place that there might have uh, nuclear disarmament or disarmament can begin, I think it's Scotland. And so, uh, part of the stuff that we talked about when I was there is uh, how can we aid one another and uh, in eliminating that. You know, we, we in this country also face the, repla the replacement of the Trident submarine base here, which I think that Leonard is going to bring that up a bit too, uh, so that, uh, that we also face that, the replacement of the Trident submarine base here. And uh, or pardon me, the states, and at the same time, that's going to happen in uh, Scotland. So last Sunday, uh, or week on the 14th of April, we did an action with young people up at uh, at uh, the Ground Zero Center for Nonviolence. That would be happen simultaneously when they were doing a blockade at Fast Lane in Scotland. So we were in touch with each other through Skype. You know, it was a great sense of uh, solidarity. But we did the action just to presence with mostly with young people against nuclear weapons to let them know that we're in solidarity. Uh, well, I, you know, I just, I know, I think I got enough time here. And, but uh, I think more than anything else, it's, uh, 
um, just about what we are able to do, the powers that we have together as people, and certainly you have devoted your life to, uh, to the ways of peace. You know, you wouldn't be here this morning if that weren't so. And uh, just being more conscious of what we can do and the power that is there, the power that's, uh, you know, the power that connects us, the power of nonviolence. And uh, yeah, so just uh, more than anything else, I think I would just leave you with that. Okay. All right. Okay.